A few videos ago, I proved unequivocally that I'm not, in fact, an NVIDIA sweet, warm, and ultra cozy pocket by buying both an RX Vega 56 and 64. I also showed that both cards are really impressive little miners. But these are gaming cards. They have AMD's RX branding, so it's about time I tested them as such. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, it sure would have been had I not been bombarded by messages claiming that Microsoft's Windows 10 Fall Creators Update, FCU for short, is a total game changer for Vega. According to multiple users, including several of you quoting other people, the update massively improved their Vega card's gaming performance across the board, sometimes by even as much as 10 to 20%. With numbers like that, I just had to see them for myself. So I decided to gather data on both of my cards before and after the big update. Heck, I even threw in a green team card or two to see if they'd also benefit from this insanity. In case you're unfamiliar with the Fall Creators update, it basically follows the same formula as the older one. It adds a fair amount of new features and functionality to Windows 10 and brings improvements to older ones that should appeal to creatives, professionals, and gamers alike. The latter gets built-in game streaming and finally the ability to monitor GPU performance straight from the task manager. The update is systematically being rolled out to users as I speak, but if you're as impatient as I am, you can download it from Microsoft Software download page right now. One thing that's noticeably absent from the update's feature list is the gaming performance gain being claimed by many online. But hey, that's not nearly enough to dissuade me from testing it out myself, so let's just dive straight into it. First, let's look at how Vega performs on the now surely obsolete pre-FCU windows. As promised, I'm also throwing a GTX 1080 into the mix. All benchmarks were run at 1440p, DirectX 12, ultra settings, and low anti-aliasing. The test system I use includes Intel's new Coffee Lake i5-8600K running at 4.7 GHz and 32GB of G-Skill Triton Z RGB RAM clocked at 2666MHz. All of the Vega tests were run with Turbo Mode enabled and all cards were tested with Windows Game Mode turned on. Not unexpectedly, neither Vega chip had too much trouble running most of the games I tested at very playable frame rates. Sure, many of them returned sub 60 FPS results and even around the 30 FPS mark in some games, but after considering the resolution and quality settings used, these results are certainly nothing to scoff at. AMD built these cards to take the GTX 1070's performance crown, and they seem to be doing just that. In fact, in the case of the Vega 64, it even trades blows with the mighty GTX 1080, taking the win in two of the benchmarks. Though, considering current pricing, it would really suck if it didn't. Which brings me to another point. Like I mentioned earlier, I was never really all that impressed with AMD's RX Vega. Just like at least half of the people watching this video, I was expecting Vega to come in like a wrecking ball and absolutely dominate all of Nvidia's high-end cards in terms of performance and price, and forcing Nvidia's hand in releasing the Volta generation of cards as soon as possible. Instead, we waited about a year for GPUs that admittedly handedly beat the GTX 1070, but just barely compete with the GTX 1080. Even worse, thanks to stock shortages, they're almost impossible to find at their MSRP with Vega 64 and sometimes even Vega 56, often costing quite a bit more than a GTX 1080, which is nothing short of ridiculous. As objectively disappointing as the Vega cards are, they're not bad GPUs by any stretch, they just feel like too little too late. But could they perform better with the help of the mythical Fall Creators update? The answer is a resounding no. Where the heck are these other people getting their numbers? At least, it's not as much as a few people would have you believe. Using the exact same setup and settings as before, only with the new update doing its thing, none of the cards I tested saw FPS improvements even approaching the 10 to 20% mark claimed online. In fact, in Ashes of the Singularity, all three of the cards returned slightly worse results after the update than they did before, but that's more likely an issue with the game itself rather than with Windows. None of this is to say that there aren't performance games to be had, because clearly there are, they're just not what all of the hype was making them out to be. Which is really annoying, because without all the fuss, it would have been a nice little addition to the update that many users weren't expecting. Instead, to those of us who were drawn into the hype, it's a big old pile of disappointment. Now, I'm not trying to imply that the people who have been seeing or are seeing amazing performance increases after the updates are lying scoundrels who deserve to be tarred and feathered. I just suspect that there was something very awry about their systems before the update that caused them to underperform and was then fixed by the update resulting in inflated performance increases. But who knows, maybe the update's gaming boost makes a bigger impact on lower end graphics cards than they do on higher end ones. Well, let's see about that. In order to test this theory, NVIDIA's ultra-low-end GT1030 comes in to save the day. After running a handful of benchmarks at 720p, the lowest possible quality settings without anti-aliasing and using DX11, it became clear that this theory is well and truly busted. 
where the GTX 1080 and Vega cards often scored an extra two or three frames per second after the update, the GT 1030 fell a lot shorter. The performance bump was far less pronounced and in my opinion falls well within the margin of error. So then, what does all of this mean? Does the Windows Fall Creator update really breathe new life into AMD's Arx Vega cards? Clearly, from my testing at least, that's a big nope. The FCU is a great Windows upgrade that comes with some really cool features, and even slightly boosts gaming performance overall, whether you're rocking a red or green team GPU. Unfortunately, it feels like AMD diehards are grasping at the even flimsiest of straws at this point, trying to justify RX Vega's disappointing gaming performance by laying the blame everywhere other than on AMD itself. From a gaming point of view, at least currently, Vega doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's overpriced, it's power hungry, runs like a furnace, and doesn't deliver enough performance to justify any of that, especially compared to Nvidia's current year-old offerings. AMD has continually focused the majority of their efforts on building compute monsters rather than gaming beasts, and that has once again backfired on them with Vega. Compute performance just isn't as big of a factor in the current gaming market as AMD seems to think it is. Again, don't misinterpret me like you guys did on my 1070 Ti opinion piece. I'm not saying that Vega is bad, or that the architecture is no good, or that AMD just pushed out a steaming, heaping pile of turtle excrement. That's not at all what I'm saying, because that wouldn't be true. Are RX Vega cards competitive with NVIDIA's higher-end listings? Sure thing. Does the Vega 56 beat the 1070 pretty handily in many games? Sure does. Does the 64 even beat the 1080 in several instances? Absolutely. But many of you take that data set and say, See? Vega doesn't suck! It beats NVIDIA! But I take that data set and I say, wow, is that really all they could do after developing these cards for an entire year after the 1070 and 1080 came out? They're just super underwhelming for gaming, which is what the RX Vega 56 and 64 are. They're gaming cards. The RX moniker indicates that they're supposed to be going toe to toe with the GTX GPUs. And they do, just not the higher end ones. And that's what disappoints me. For raw compute performance, RX Vega is the king, handedly keeping pace with the 1080 Ti for any of my professional applications. That's fantastic, but for gaming, when you price a liquid-cooled Vega 64 above a 1080 Ti and you're only competing with the GTX 1080, you've done goof somewhere. But then there's all of these counter-arguments of, well, AMD was focusing on their mainstream lineup with the 500 series, or, it'll get better over time, it's just like fine wine, you just wait in two years and Vega's gonna destroy the 1080 Ti. And I hear you, I understand where you're coming from. AMD products do age really well and usually outperform their rivals years after the fact due to their raw focus on strength over optimizations. But come on, when do we own up to the fact that AMD already had a year to nicely age Vega? When do we look at the time gap between NVIDIA's high tier launch and AMD's and admit that maybe Vega is a commercial flop? Does that mean that they won't age well? No. Does that mean that they suck for gaming? No. It just means that AMD has positioned themselves such a way in the market that they don't deliver on what their development time really indicated that they would. They might make great used cards in about two years against Pascal, but by that point, we won't be discussing Pascal anymore. We'll be talking about Volta. It's the same reason why you're not getting flagship benchmarks of the R9 380 versus the GTX 970. We've moved on, even though the 380 has aged better than the 970. Oh, and while we're on the subject of shortcomings, fix your dang drivers, AMD. Benchmarking my Vega cards turned out to be the most infuriating benchmark experiences I've had in a long time, and it all comes down to bad drivers. The number of driver versions I went through in order to get the system 100% stable was insane. And even then, I had tons of trouble with Radeon settings Wattman utility. I know a lot of you hear my arguments and you can see things from my perspective, even if you don't agree with me. And the rest of you will likely think that I'm an AMD hater, which I can assure you I'm not. I just upgraded my editing machine to include a Vega 64 GPU because I respect what they've done on the professional side of things, but for gaming, it's just a hard pile of suck. In the end though, I'm sticking with my previous thoughts on Vega. They're great AMD cards for mining and professional workloads, but they're not the best gaming cards you can get for the same money. It becomes especially hard to recommend buying them considering the GTX 1070 Ti is a card that is dropping tomorrow. I don't have any official benchmarks because Tank is doing them all, right Tank? Shut up Tank. But just by looking at the CUDA cores, clock speeds, and pricing on the 1070 Ti, 
it should easily outperform Vega 56 while costing less, and then also go toe to toe with the Vega 64 while costing significantly less. AMD is in a really tough position in their high end GPU department. They played their hand with the best that they had, and it was barely competitive with what already existed. That made it super easy for Nvidia to just look at their cards and just decide that the GPUs that couldn't just barely not be bin for a GTX 1080 and then turn them into something that'll curb stomp their closest red team competitor. Anyways, besides all that, we made this Fall Creators Update video to investigate the claims that were being made about it with Vega and it seems to just be people who had issues fixed with their actual systems rather than overall intense performance increases anywhere. And we decided to focus on Vega specifically with this video because the FCU played so nicely into the AMD's fans' cards of the thought that AMD ages better and just needs time to improve. That hype train doesn't exist, friends. Sure, your system might experience some improvements. I've heard that there's a CSGO glitch that might be rectified with this update, but it seems like Microsoft is correcting flaws with this update, not pushing out 15 to 20% performance upgrades. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. What do you guys think of the FCU? Have you had a chance to try it out yet? Have you experienced massive gains? Have you had any of your bugs fixed? Do your cards go down in performance? Let me know either down in the comments or over on Twitter, I'm at UF Disciple. Be sure to smash that like button to show support for us and everything we do around here, as well as subscribe to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I'm Brett with the UF Disciple channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers. Coming like a wrecking ball and absolutely dominate all of Nvidia's high-end cards in terms of performance. Ah, okay, it's hard to recover from that. By buying both an RX Vega 56 and 60, where are they? I want them. At least the box. Where's the box? Behind you. Okay, that's 56. Where's 64? Found it. Cool. I always need to make sure I have props on hand. Does the Windows Fall Creator update really breathe new life into AMD's ARX Vega cards? Clearly, for my testing at least, that's a big no. That's a ceiling. Crap. <laughs> Can I have that back? I, I don't think I did anything to the ceiling.